You're a podcast listener, and this is a podcast ad. Reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Lips and Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements, or run a reproduced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience with Lips and Ads. Go to lipsandads.com now. That's L I B S Y N ads.com. This is the Washington Times front page for Monday, May 13th, 2024. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Frantic U.S. and international efforts to prevent a full-scale Israeli assault on the southern Gaza Strip city of Rafah appear to be making little headway. Dave Sands reports Sunday brought fresh signs of fighting spreading beyond Rafah, despite intense U.S.-backed regional efforts to forge at least a temporary ceasefire. The Biden administration has been warning of a humanitarian disaster if Israel moves on Rafah, where the last full Hamas fighting units are holed up. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told NBC News that an assault in the city of more than 2 million would kill many more civilians without dealing with the problem of Hamas or offering a post-conflict settlement for governing Gaza. Politicians often bet big on promising tax cuts to get elected. President Biden is letting it ride on tax increases, primarily on the wealthy. Seth McLaughlin reports the president has announced plans to impose a spate of new levies, including higher income taxes, taxes on unrealized capital gains, and a billionaire minimum income tax. Biden says the changes will touch only the wealthy, and taxpayers earning less than $400,000 annually won't be affected. Gallup polls over the last decade plus show Americans have become more open to redistributing wealth via heavier taxes on the rich. The Pew Research Center also found in its most recent polling that 65% of adults approved of higher taxes on large corporations, and 61% supported higher taxes on households, with annual incomes of more than $400,000. Federal agencies have struggled mightily to get employees back to their offices, and some are still trying to figure out how to monitor those working from home. The White House has set a goal of 50-50, Stephen Dynan reports, which means employees with office jobs are expected to spend at least five out of every 10-day work period in the office. Agency chiefs say they're striving to meet that goal, though anecdotal reports suggest attendance is sparse. The Public Buildings Reform Board used cell phone location data to gauge the occupancy rates of agency headquarters buildings in Washington from January through September of 2023. They found them at just 30 percent of their pre-pandemic levels. A wave of mostly rural liberal arts colleges have announced their closures even after receiving billions of dollars in federal pandemic relief funding. Sean Salai reports nonprofit education news outlet The Heckinger Report said at least one college per week from January 1st through April 26th announced closures or mergers with other campuses. Among them were Birmingham Southern College in Alabama, Fontbonne University in St. Louis, and Notre Dame College in Ohio. The pace of closures doubled from 2023 when a little more than two universities per month announced they would shutter. In 2020 and 2021, the Trump and Biden administrations poured $77 billion of coronavirus relief money into higher education in three waves. Most colleges spent that money before the deadline last summer. The remainder received extensions that are expiring at the end of June. And finally, legal affairs reporter Alex Sawyer looks at former President Trump's hush money trial through the lens of another politician's similar issues, former North Carolina Senator John Edwards. In 2011, the Justice Department indicted Edwards on six charges related to campaign finance. Prosecutors said he funneled roughly $900,000 through campaign donations to his mistress to pay for her living and travel expenses. The jury acquitted him on one count and was hung on the other charges. The DOJ eventually dropped the case. The Trump trial bears similarities to Edwards' case, in which he was accused of using donors and supporters to hide payments to his mistress. The former president's trial is expected to last through June. Find all today's Trump page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash Trump page or the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on social media at Watch Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.
Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.